What's going on today? It's your host, Zach Shoe Shoemaker, and today I'm welcoming on the newest member of UConn's now top three ranked 2022 recruiting class. He was the New Hampshire Gatorade Player of the Year after a dominant season at New Hampton and is now transferring out to IMG, which is where he'll finish off his high school career at. He also just named the All Peace Jam second team after averaging 19 points a game, seven rebounds, two assists, and a block per game while playing at Peach Jam with expressions. He also is the 38th highest ranked commit in UConn history. And that's Alex Caravan. You're committed now. You're also heading out to IMG in the near future. All this movement's happening in your life, but still, you know how the next year is going to look like for you. You know where you're heading to college. How are you feeling right now? I'm super excited. I mean, a lot of stress and relief has just been lifted off my family's shoulders. Mm -hmm. Just announcing UConn and then looking forward to having this college decision all behind me is just super excited. I had you on a little bit over a year ago, right when you start talking to college coaches and your guy that just got your very first ranking in ESPN. I think it was more towards like the back end of it at first, like 45 or so. You're still around that now, but also you now 247 got you ranked. Rivals has you ranked. You got offers from 28 or so schools in the country. Just how's it been in the past year now, kind of getting used to seeing everyone kind of get more respect in your name and finally pulling in all these offers that you kind of dreamed of over the past year? It's crazy. I've never thought I'd be in this situation just because I always thought I was underrated and under recruited. But mm -hmm. looking back at it now, I've earned it all. I've worked for this. And it's just awesome being in this moment. And I couldn't ask for anything more. You gotta walk us through this process a little bit because you weren't too public about it, obviously you just all things came out as UConn's where I'm gonna be heading. But who was really in the running for you? Like was there another one or two other schools that you really were heavily intrigued in, you possibly were going to commit to or like kind of heavily in your process up to the end? Yeah, so I was, besides UConn, I was very close with Northwestern, Ohio State, Notre Dame, and Penn State. I'd say those four others were easily in the top, and I could have gone to either one of those two. So what was it about Coach Hurley and UConn that separated themselves? Like, how were they able to pull off another big top 100 group? Yeah, they're just an awesome coaching staff. They get to know you outside of basketball before, like, even talking about recruiting and just the connection that they built with me is just, it was just awesome. And it was hard to say no to them. Even being a school close to home to me, that talented and just that of an elite program, it was just hard to say no to that. So it was just very tough. And then Coach Hurley and their staff is absolute best. How big was that for you? And like you said, you get to stay pretty close to home now. Family can watch you play some games. Like, how big was that for you in your recruiting process? It was big. I mean, mm -hmm. just having my family stay close to home. I thought it was like the cherry on top, but I know for my mom, she definitely wanted me to stay <laughs> close. And then um, my family, just grandparents, everyone, AU, just everyone I grew up with gets to watch me play close to home. So just looking back at it, it's just, I just think it was the right choice. I never ask guys this question until they do commit because obviously if someone really reveals this answer, a lot of media is going to kind of point to this school. But growing up, was there a certain program that you fell in love with that you kind of was like, quote unquote, maybe your dream school growing up? Yeah, um, probably North Carolina was always one of my dream schools growing up. And then after starting watching UConn with Kemba and Shabazz Napier, I started to fall in love with mm -hmm. UConn too. But I'd usually say North Carolina was – the school I always watched growing up. Absolutely. Well, you also did take a visit to UConn beginning of July, about a little bit over a month ago. So what was that visit like and how big was that for you and ultimately ending up committing there? Yeah, it was a big visit for me, just getting the whole campus feel and then finally meeting the coaching staff and players in person was just, it was huge for me instead of looking through them at Zooms. But um, it just started to make me feel like home and that's, that campus feel just started um making everything realize that's the spot for me so what did that time look like for you I mean I know each visit each school does different things with different players so during your time when you went out there what's all the things you did and just ultimately like what were the big appealing factors of that visit yeah so I went on a campus tour just saw the whole campus saw what's outside of the campus to different shops and restaurants and then meeting meeting the staff, meeting some of the players and just watching them practice and go through a workout, just the intensity of that. 
was awesome. That's what I needed. And meeting the strength coach, which is very important for me in the process. And then just getting a whole feel of campus, like once again, and seeing everything, seeing how uh, the players adjusted to the campus and how their schedule goes around their players was just important to me. Now there's two of the guys already locked into your recruiting class, Donovan, Corey, two of the top 100 recruits. Have you kind of created a relationship with them prior to committing there to start forming a little bit after now? Like, do they have any impact even in your recruiting process? Like, where do you stand with those guys? Yeah, so Donovan, I've known Donovan for a year now. So mm -hmm. he was, we always talked about recruiting and possibly teaming up. And then when he committed to UConn, he would always send me the Husky emoji pretty much <laughs> every day. And then Corey, I've gotten to know Corey a little bit more. We've played each, against each other a bunch during the EYBL. Mm -hmm. And then just playing against him and now being teammates with him. He's a super competitive dude and just very talented too. You mentioned Dom a little bit. Obviously, he's going to be a big man down low for a while, but how did you guys first get to know each other? Like, when did that bomb first start, and how did you guys start, really start that relationship? Yeah, so we've seen each other play in a bunch of tournaments and then through social media, of course, and he's another local kid, too. So <clears throat> local kids usually love staying in touch with each other. So mm -hmm. we just started texting each other back and forth and then finally meeting in person in tournaments and just started to take off from there, too. Did you tell him where you're committing prior to ultimately going there, or did he find out just like everyone else did? He, I should have told him earlier, but he found out when everyone else did. <laughs> so what was his first reaction? I'm sure you guys probably texted or called. He was hyped. He was super mm -hmm. excited. He texted me right away. He was just super excited. He can't, get, he can't wait to play with me and just get to work with me. So he was beyond happy. Now, I'm not sure if there's going to be other guys add in or whatever's going to happen, but for right now, we know yourself, Dom, and Corey's locked in. How special is that 2022 recruiting class so far? It's extremely special. I mean, Corey's, he's a dog. He's super competitive, like I said. And then Donovan, probably the best big in our class. So um, they're just a great duo to come in with. And we're something special. I mean, they each do different things to help win for their teams this summer, especially. And mm -hmm. going in, they just want to win. They're super competitive dudes. And they just, we just can't wait to get started. Now, is this 2022 class pretty much locked in? Are there still possibly going to be other guys that come into this class? Are you guys recruiting anyone else? Like, where do you guys stand with the UConn 2022 recruiting class right now? We're going to try to get one more dude. I'm going to try to recruit a dude. I don't want to say who it is yet. Just, he's a very good player. Um, but I'm going to try to get him as soon as possible. I'm going to keep texting him and stuff and just try to get him on board. So whoever that fourth guy is, adding him into this group now, how much better would this make this recruiting class? We'll easily be the number one class, <laughs> easily, <laughs> once we try to get them. Absolutely. Well, obviously at the head of this all, it is Coach Hurley, and UConn has a prestigious history. They've won championships. They've done a lot of great things. But one thing they haven't been too notable for, pulling in top 100 recruits, at least multiple top 100 recruits each recruiting class. And Coach Hurley's managed to do that now in a couple of recruiting classes he's got out there. So what is it about Coach Hurley? Like, how does he continue to bring in – the best of the best recruits year in, year out. Yeah. Uh, outside of basketball, he's a super cool dude. He's so easy to talk to. Everyone loves talking to him. And once you get to know him, he's just an incredible person. And then on the court, too, he just has, has a, such an intensity and competitive spirit that draws players to wanting to play with him. Mm -hmm. So when you see your coach wanting to compete as hard as you want to and he wants to win as badly or even more as you do, it just draws you in so much that you want to play for that coach. So I feel like getting to know him even more and more outside of basketball and on the court, I just felt like it was a perfect match to play for him. What does he want from Alex Carabelli? By the time you end up getting out there for your freshman season, how does he plan to utilize you and what does he also want you to bring to the program as a freshman? Yeah, he wants to bring in my versatility on the offensive end, just help create for my teammates, shoot the ball, and just bring something that he normally usually doesn't bring in with my skill set. And then my competitive spirit, just keep competing with my IQ. And um, he wants me to make, be an impact player right away, try to make it to the first team for a rookie of the Big East or whatever that award is. Mm -hmm. And then um, – just bring in a national championship. We're striving for number five and just winning another national championship to UConn would be the goal. That was a unique thing about you because I think a lot of people kind of see this prototypical player, guys a lot like Corey Floyd, who he's been bringing in, like those type of players. 
a little bit different than the past few different guys have been bringing in. So what do you bring to this program? Like what's different about you than, or say some of the other guys we've been seeing in the past recruiting classes? Yeah, I would say my skill set's very different. Just how you could throw me into different positions, I think is very different to what he's brought in before. Mm -hmm. And just the winning culture and just my IQ for the team. Um, just using my different skill sets, I think will be different for him. We're getting into your next upcoming season at IMG in a second, but you have one more year to develop, to grow, and before you get on campus. So what do you want to improve on? Like, what's some of the biggest things that's part of your game, maybe your body? Like, what do you want to get better at over the next 365 days or so to get on campus? Yeah, I want to start improving my body, get stronger, get quicker, uh, improve every aspect of my body. And then shot creating ball handling, just tightening that, up, tightening that up and getting quicker while sharpening all my other assets too, just before college. As you said, your big thing is that you are very versatile. You can really run three, four positions right now. Is there one that you'd say you prefer the most? Like, is there one that you say is your favorite position to run? I prefer all, but a three, four is usually uh, what I strive best in. Right now, obviously, rankings would change over the next year, and I don't mean too much at the end of the day, but you are top 38 highest commit of all time in UConn history. Does that bring any kind of pressure? What kind of comes with that when you think about that? It's definitely a little bit of pressure. I haven't thought about it too much, but um, it's pressure. I, I didn't even know that fact until you said <laughs> it, um, but – I look forward to it. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to go in, do me, do my best, and see how everything goes from there. But I'm just there to win for us. Absolutely. Well, this might put you on the spot a little bit, but who would you say is your top five all-time UConn players? Top five? Number one is definitely Kemba, and then two is Shabazz, just because I know them from the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Three, Andre Drummond for sure. He's, he's tough. Mm -hmm. And then I'll throw in Rudy Gay mm -hmm. at number four. And then number five, I'll throw in James Booknight. I mean, he's the most recent one. and He's going to be a star in the NBA. Absolutely. Who would you say is your favorite guy? I know you said Kevin Shabazz at first. Are one of those two your favorite UConn players? Or is, he, or is he maybe one of the other guys? Uh, Kemba for sure is probably one of my favorites. And then after watching Booknight this year too, he's definitely up there. Absolutely. Well, let's get into your high school career a little bit. You've had – a longer high school career than some people would get because you've been playing at this level since you've been in eighth grade. So let's take us to the journey. I know you've gone to a few different schools so far. Up to this point, though, walk us through your high school career and how you've ultimately become the Alex Caravan that we've all seen you as today. Yeah, so my high school career has been challenging. I mean, I've been challenged ever since playing eighth grade against on the varsity level. So it's definitely been a challenge. And then going to a different school for my freshman year than my sophomore year, just – my sophomore year was the huge step for me in my high school career, just because that was the prep level and playing against Brewster Academy, Northfield, Mount Hermon. Those schools are so different and they're as close as you can get to his college. And um, taking that major step, step improved me so much as a player. It got me more competitive, more tougher, more ready. And just, I mean, high school has been fun and just, I feel like it's challenged me a bunch throughout all those years. So if I would have told you heading into eighth grade or even freshman season that you're going to become a top of your recruit, you're going to be able to choose from 20 different schools across the country, pretty much one of school in every single power five type of level school. And often you're going to land up with somewhere like a UConn prestigious type school like them. Could you ever believe that? No, to be honest, no. Watching, I watched myself this morning back in eighth grade. <laughs> I thought I was going to be a D3 player sometimes, but I just kept working, staying through this process, and this everything's been working out so far. So what point did it all come together? Like, when did you start feeling, you know, I truly am a high-level player. I believe I can play at any Division One school in the country. I'm a top guy in this recruiting class. Like, when did you start feeling that? Yeah, so I started taking basketball seriously in eighth grade, but then after my freshman year, I probably thought, like, yeah, I could do something with this for sure and go D1 and – hopefully make it to the pros. So I think after freshman year is when I realized how good I really am. You also won New Hampshire Gary Play of the Year last season. Obviously, Gary Play of the Year is probably the most prestigious high school award right up to McDonald's and Team USA type stuff. So what was that award like? Take us through how you found out about that and just what your reaction was to winning that. 
Yeah. So I found that out through my dad sending me an email about it. So I had no idea. And I was super excited. I mean, it was definitely my biggest goal coming into the season was winning that award for myself. And um, it was just super exciting. I mean, like you said, it's prestigious. I've always seen other players win that award. So just to win that award and go down as one of those winners is super happy for me. You have also decided to make another big move now, a move that I'm really high on. Obviously, the past two years was just fine, too. You developed a lot. It was great. But IMG, as everyone knows, is a different level. Like, that's a college campus, pretty much. You're going to train with the best of the best, football, basketball, soccer. Like, every athlete's the best of the best out there. And you're a part of a team that has a full roster going to Division One as well. So, walk us this decision, though. Like, why was IMG the place you said, you know, this is where I want to finish off high school at? Yeah, it was a super hard choice <clears throat> because I love New Hampton. There's nothing wrong with that program or school. They're perfect for me. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, their opportunity and just, I believe it'll get me so much more ready for college than any other program in the country. So for my senior year, I just wanted to focus on getting ready for UConn. And I think I'm just that spot for me, just the facilities, the training, competing against those kids in practice. I don't think I can get more ready than I'm due. I know they're still going to probably have some more moves in the roster and whatnot, but are you close to anyone out there? Yeah. Like, have you guys talked to anybody on the team? And if so, who's someone that you're excited to go play with or just be on campus with? I haven't talked to anyone really. I've met a couple of my teammates already through the EYBL, but um, not really close to anyone. I'm, I'm excited to play with everyone. Let's get into this EYBL because you just walked away all Peace Jam second team, 19 points a game, seven rebounds while playing in a bubble during Peach Jam, but you still finally got to have an EYBL season. So walk us through, like, just getting back on that court, playing EYBL circuit, what was that like? It was super exciting. I mean, you could see when you watch the games, no one took it for granted. Everyone played their hearts out every game. And just to get back at it after missing it last year is just the opportunity everyone wanted. It was, it's easily the best circuit in the country. Nothing gets better than the UIBL. Every game was a dog fight. Every game was tough. And for us to make it to Peach Jam, I mean, there's no better honor. And just, we were close to getting out of our pool, which sucks, but um, it was just an awesome experience and everyone on our team loved it. And part of the reason I always say rankings are not too accurate is because I think one of them has you outside the top 100 for whatever reason. You look what you just did. Like you said, Peach Jam is the best of the best. You guys are playing with especially the best of the best of the EYBL even because you guys qualify for Peace Jam and you still average 19 points, seven rebounds, all Peace Jam second team. So clearly you were able to go out there, put on a show. What led to that though? Like when you're going up against other guys that are quote unquote better than you according to rankings and all this different stuff that goes behind it, what's your mindset heading in the type of games? It's just motivation. I mean, pretty much all the teams that we played had a kid ranked higher than me. So Going in, I knew that, and I just wanted to prove myself out there. And during that whole bubble, I wanted to prove why I should be ranked higher. And um, I feel like I put people on notice and started to wake people up on what they really think of me. Mm-hmm. So I think Peach Jam was successful, even though we didn't win. But mm-hmm. we still had great moments as a team. And personally, for myself, I thought I played very well. Yeah, as you mentioned it too, you got to be a part of the bubble where you guys are pretty much locked in, as we've been seeing with a lot of different sport events the past year and a half now. So just what was it like being in a bubble? It was hard. I mean, the beginning was fun. It was relaxing. But then closer towards the end, it was hard because pretty much everyone on every team got COVID. So we just wanted to protect ourselves and be safe first. But um it started to get challenging towards the end. Most kids wanted to go home, but we just had to figure out a way to fight through it. Another aspect about you is something I'm really high on is that you have a high GPA. I know you value academics a lot too. 3.95 GPA right now. Walk us through that. Like, has it been something you put a priority in on yourself to do? Has it been family inspired you to do it? Like, why do you value academics so highly, even though you know you're already a Division One athlete? Yeah. Uh, so my mom, ever since I was a little kid, she was on my ass about it. I mean, <laughs> if I came home with a bad grade, I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't play video games. I couldn't do anything. So she definitely set that standard for me. And then when I started getting older, too, I realized how important academics are because the ball does stop balancing eventually and you got to figure out what to do after basketball. So academics have been huge for me. They've been number one outside of basketball for me, too. So um mm-hmm. It's just setting that standard that my mom did was so important for me. 
So how do you balance them both? Because I know some guys might not value academics too high, especially guys that know they're going Division One. So how do you balance that, though? Because I know you put tons of hours into your craft. How do you balance both aspects of life and still being great at both aspects as well? Yeah, it's definitely hard. I mean, having great grades while being a great player, it's definitely a challenge. But I just try to find balance through um, doing homework during class or doing homework right after practice. So usually I'm not playing basketball. I'm always studying and doing getting that work done. So it's, it's definitely hard. I mean, it's not ideal, but just have those good grades. It's so important for me. Have you thought of what you might want to do after basketball or maybe what you're even going for college for? Like, is there a certain degree or other passion that you have outside of basketball? Yeah, um, I'll probably go into the business field and just do something around sports. But after basketball, I always want to stay with sports, whether that's basketball, coaching, organization, something like that. So as long as I stay around sports, I'll be good. You also were part of something else recently, the ASFO Challenge. You raised over $1,000 right at it. So Walk us through that decision. Like, what kind of led you to be a part of that? And just what was that like? Yeah, it was. Su- I was super excited to be a part of that. It's a very selective group, and just to use my basketball talents to help bring awareness to cancer research and start raising money for cancer. Um, it was just a blessing to be a part of. And having that event yesterday, shooting for two hours straight, it was definitely a challenge. But um, just to keep bringing awareness for this. Uh, organization was just super exciting for me and just to bring more awareness now i know each athlete has certain areas that they kind of more led to directed to in their life and you're gonna be able to start making money next year in college with different sponsorships and whatnot and as you get to the pros obviously a lot more money will come in that way too but is there a certain area of life that you want to invest in or maybe help the community in when you get older yeah i've always wanted to give back to the town that i grew up in just because it's home for me and just to show kids too that like doesn't matter where you come from you can make it out of here so just giving back to my community will be important for me just because for the continuous support that I've been given throughout my years here was just important for me and it helps me be the person I am today so definitely giving back to them I'd say is number one for me after basketball ends absolutely well something I was like wrapping up with is discussing your legacy and we now know your next chapter is going to be at UConn, right? Be for one or four years, somewhere between there even. So when you do leave UConn, though, what do you want to be remembered for, for what you achieve both on and off the court in the community out there? Yeah, for UConn, on the court, of course, is to win Big East championships um, and win national championships. That's easily the most important. And then off the court, I would say um, just being a great person, respectful. Anyone can come to me. I'll help anyone out. And just being a good person in the community is always important to me. Just having a good reputation off the court would just be so important for me at UConn. Numbers are always a huge thing for guys as well. And you know that you're going to be wearing some type of number out to UConn. Have you decided what number you're going to be rocking out with yet? And if so, what number would that be? I'm definitely going to try to get number 21. I know a very good player there right now, Sonogo, has that number. So... If he does go to the draft, I'm going to try to take it. But if he does stay, we'll we'll talk it out. But he'll have the first dibs on that for sure. So if he stays, I'll have to look for another number. What is it about 21? Like, why is that the number you like rocking out with? Yeah, I've had it since fourth grade. And ever since then, I started to feel and be myself. So having that number for so long, I never really wore another number. So I've always wanted to stay with it. Absolutely, man. Well, my final thing for you, what are your three biggest goals you have set for your UConn career? My three biggest goals? Mm-hmm. Um, win a national championship, win a Big East championship, and then uh, bring that program back up to where it was before and just make it an elite one again. Absolutely, man. Congratulations on your big commitment once again, man. I'm excited to see what God you got next for you, and I appreciate taking time to come on today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely, man. You're also welcome on, man. God bless. Yeah, you too.